right. Well, good morning, Greg. It is morning. It is indeed. It so is. good to We've, you. In the in the middle of it right now, folks, we're recording this on what March 18th, but uh, yeah. very, very, very busy for us where everything came together at once. So it's three straight weeks of travel, basically back and forth, back and forth, different places, which is always fun and interesting. But but when it all piles up at once, it gets yep. uh, makes for really long days Uh of getting work done uh, between the margins, as they say, I guess, but uh, we still want to keep uh, um, putting stuff out. And so this conversation is something we, again, one of our, one of our conversations in the car, I guess, yeah. um, where we talk about, you know, was it a weapon or a tool? Uh, it, what's the difference between a weapon and a tool, right? Why do we see things one way and not the other way sometimes? Uh, and, and so that's kind of the general uh, topic. And there's a few cases that we want to get into. But one of the things this kind of um, goes back to, you know, a, it's a lot about context, right? Context matters yep. and intent matters. So sometimes uh, we don't see things for things that they can be used for. We only see them for things that we know how to use them for. Um, yep. uh, if I've only used a screwdriver to, to screw something in, uh, I don't see it as something someone wants to jam into my neck, right? If I've only used a utility knife to cut down yeah. and break cut up in cardboard boxes right i don't think of it as something as 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 threatening right it's it's a tool not a weapon to me but but technically technically all weapons are tools i would describe them as a tool and and most and most tools can be used as weapon and i think we'll we'll get into that but i just kind of want to start there to see if that that makes yeah. sense to you for the for the start of the conversation no, no. So let's go. Let's go back to, to what started this. The inception is always a good uh, uh, thing. Looking back, so uh, we've uh, you and I and I uh, with other folks and alone have been teaching about street tools for over forty years, right? So right. Uh, I, I'm I sure haven't that been alive before for 40 that years. But... No, but what I'm trying to say is that's why I tried to say you and I when we yeah, worked together, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. me and other people, and then me alone, all the way back to the dojo in the '70s. Right. You know. So and and I'm sure. I learned it from somebody and those people had done right. it in the thirties and, you know, 1800 fuck, you know, somebody was showing somebody a belt buckle and swinging it around and hitting an ostrich or something. <laughs> but the idea is that, that all weapons are tools and not all tools are weapons. Simple. Okay. The second part of that argument is uh, a, a weapon is defined as, you know, a tool, which is intended uh, to kill or inflict injury. Whereas most tools can kill uh, uh, or inflict injury, but it's unintentional. That wasn't right. the intent. So now we're talking about the intent, not motive. But let's get back to street tools. The 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 argument started with you and I in the car. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an argument. It was a sharing of information because there's some boob on on LinkedIn that was showing like, hey, you know, if you keep a ball pan, uh, ball peen hammer in your boot, uh, uh, <laughs> a cop can't arrest you when they stop the motorcycle, you know, because it's a hammer. And you Bullshit. can tell them, hey, I, I got it. Well, listen to me, uh, uh, folks, don't listen to absolutely everything some uh, uh, idiot tool puts on, on there. You, yeah, tool on tool. <laughs> tools on tools. <laughs> tools on tools. There's your title right there. <laughs> tools on tools, Brian. Because the idea is like, like, like listen, I, I see people, first of all, the best tool, if you want to carry it with you, is a box cutter, cutter or some edge weapon yeah. that's under three inches. Because when you get to three inches, or over specifically if it's fixed or the blade comes out uh, 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 mechanically, you're gonna be guilty of a felony somewhere in the United States. Just telling you. But the, the cool thing is you never have to reload a knife. You get what I'm saying? Knives are silent. Uh, uh, knives are lethal and knives are utile. So I can use it camping or, or to you know carve up an animal to eat or, or to kill my neighbor if he gets out of control. Sorry, Lon. But the idea <laughs> is, is that, that this idiot was trying to say that, listen, you're not going to be circumspect if you have, for example, a ruler and polish one side so you can behead somebody. The whole <laughs> idea has nothing to do with, with that. It has to do with what's your intent. So intent determines that, that you accidentally or purposely committed the crime. Uh, uh, motive says why you did it. So, so the idea that just because you did it, whether you did it accidentally or intentionally, Okay, you carry that item, so you intended to use it as a weapon. Therefore, it's assault with a deadly weapon. It's well, so well, facto. Do you well, see what I'm no, trying no, to say? And, and Don't... Th that's a great point. When someone says, "Oh, you can carry yep. this," 
for this reason. It's like, well, well, no, uh, yeah. you, you, you can show that you demonstrate intent when you put a ball peen hammer in your boot or something. Exactly. Like that, and that's then, not where it goes. then where do you go? Exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, I would, if I was the attorney, Brian, you're spot oh, on. Yeah. So uh, if I was the attorney on that, I would say, okay, do me a favor. Do you ever met a carpenter? Yep. Yeah. You ever met a carpenter on a job site? Yeah. What are some of the things that that person carries? Now you knew that carpenter, uh, uh, even off duty, right? Yeah. Did you ever go to seven 11 with them? Yeah. Did you ever go to dinner with them? Yeah. Did they carry their tool belt with them? No. Where was it in the car? You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Bang, thank you. Your honor jury is, you know, well, over that, there going, ah, you know, that, that, and that's even the, the utility knife example you give, like, that's yep. something that we, we do in, in places. If, you know, it's a real easy yep. way, if for some reason you need a weapon, you know, you can get a utility knife anywhere and it doesn't really raise suspicion, but, but if you're walking around with a utility knife in your pocket and you're not cutting up cardboard boxes and you're not a carpenter, you're not at work. Yeah. That's like, what, what intent do you have behind that? Precisely. So in our case, I would say like, Hey, this is a backup. If something goes wrong, I have a weapon available because I'm in a chaotic place or I'm in a dangerous yes. place and I, I don't have the ability. Like, so, but, but that's clearly my intent when it's in and my, you can explain next to my that. fucking computer. You know what I'm saying? Precisely. <laughs> you can explain that in the motive, like, like uh, in the, the moment rather, uh, 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 thinking of motive already. Uh, but if you think about it, like like uh, uh, we've been in places, you and I, uh, in the continental United States where we were teaching at a gosh damn uh, 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 base that was close to an area that wasn't a lot of fun. And so I'd always go in, I would go, I would buy a box cutter, I would open the box cutter in the cart, along with the spare undies I was getting or whatever, because, you know, we were uh, uh, driving and flying and driving and flying and we never got a chance to to do some things and I would have them right there. So here's our water bottles. Here's our, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the little, uh, hydration sticks. Here's the, the, the box cutter open right there with the, the package, you know, nothing concealed on my clothing, pushing it around in a store while we're shopping. And if somebody would have stopped and said, what's with that? Listen, I don't know you. I don't know this environment. It's late at night. You get what I'm trying to say. And I'm just trying to get through the, the, the game. So we pay for the box cutter and then I carry it in my hand on the way to my car. Listen, it's not paranoia, Brian. It, it's the fact that, that we don't have the opportunity sometime to choose where we go and train. You think it's going to be different in a couple of days in Columbia? I mean, we're right. going to be coming up with street tools uh, 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 for the express purpose to, to ensure our safety and the safety of the people around us. And, and that doesn't mean that we're going to increase the level or potential for violence, does it? See, that's the difference. The guy with the hammer in his boot, is looking for trouble. And you know, the idea is if you look for trouble, I think scientifically we can prove yeah. you're going to find it, yeah. you know? Yeah, so. exactly. No. And, and that's a good point. Cause, cause that, that, that one, you, you do see that junk on social media all the yep. time and people are like, oh, okay, one, you clearly have no understanding of the law and right. two, you've never met a decent attorney. Cause they're going to be like, oh yeah, no, I can go after you for that. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's uh, I don't, I don't know, but whatever that's, that's not, so, well, let me go think. one more yeah. on that one. The, the other guy, because it was all what you could keep in your boot because you could reach down into your boot quickly and, and boots are hard when somebody pats you down and it's unlikely that they'll discover the item hidden in your boot. Yeah. Except that <laughs> boots have been a hiding place since the Roman legions. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to say? <laughs> the, the, remember that day Jesus wore a boot and he had a rock in a boot just yeah. in case, right? The, the idea is that, that, that same guy with the same article had a different person he interviewed, uh, bless you. And, and, uh, in the interview, the guy said, yeah. I always keep the brass knuckle. And if I'm going to fight somebody, I choose to fight in a bathroom because of these factors. Uh, first God. of all, if you <laughs> carry a pair of brass advice. knuckles, a horrible advice. If you carry a pair of brass knuckles, understand that brass knuckles, the possession of which are like a mechanical knife, it's a felony. So just being in possession, no other factors need apply. Then the second thing is that you used it during an assault and that you chose the location yep. of the assault to be the bathroom. Brian, what are we talking about? We're yep. talking about intent, intent. 101. You're yep. going to prison, you know? Yeah, that's, so, that's so, 100% intent. It, oh, my God. It, 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 you're demonstrating it right there. It's and buffoonery. It's chuckleheadery. It but people buy those books. They tune into those YouTube. And I swear to God, the LinkedIn, if I see one more clap when somebody, you know, talks about that, it's like, what, what are you, an idiot? I think what it comes from, Brian, I think it comes from when I was young, my youthful fascination with like Batman and Spider-Man. Yeah. They had a utility, exactly. belt, a utility or belt nifty on it, you know? Yeah. And I think nowadays it's even worse. I, Look, I, I have all these things on me. I, I Yeah. Like a uh, uh, lock pick. Uh, so uh, I can't tell I, you how many <laughs> times 
in my 60 years that that lock pick came in handy? And you okay. know what the answer is? Never. So I will, never. I will, okay. I will acquiesce one day. So I did actually go through lock picking covert entry yeah. courses, but, but sure. the, the idea was that I actually was able to do that on deployment before and use it, but it was like, rare and and, yep. and unnecessary really um but it was because it was a padlock on a chain and then to get to the internal doors or the old school doors with the skeleton keys and so i carried a little yep. spindle of skeleton keys that i could stick in and pop the lock with and it sooner or later one would work but, right but yeah right, right. exactly but but yeah that's the say that's another one i constantly make fun of for that reason i, yep. I it's like we're gonna we're gonna do wh wh where are you gonna pick what are you getting into here like if yep. this is and especially when people are like well you know if things go bad and you got to get access to something like yeah throw a rock through the window buddy like at that yep. point like what are you learning this you're for? exactly anyway, right so my dear I, my dear friend jaeger came to me one day on the ranch and jaeger had this uh, i won't give any more details but uh the vehicle that he pulled down it was impossible to get into the trunk in any other manner other than having a key or a cutting torch and and so i said well what do you want to do and he said I need to get in. And I said, okay, well, uh, are you going to change the lock cylinder? And he goes, yeah. And I go, okay, easy day. So yeah. I showed him, you know, open a lock, jam a, a thing in, turn it, you know, this way and pop it out and it opens. And he goes, that was amazing. I go, no, it was a tool. This is a perfect discussion. <laughs> yeah. That was a tool, right? And any tool can be modified or adapted mm -hmm. because what's a, what's the intent behind a tool? The, the tool makes our life yeah. or a job easier. Yeah. Do you see and it what has I'm a trying specific to say? Purpose too. Yeah. An abacus, a calculator, right. tools of sort. There, there was the article, uh, 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 Chantel, our, our, uh, our, uh, our advisor, our social uh, commentator, uh, uh, sent that article about the woman, I think it was in Florida, that was uh, old granny. And she looked so disarming. And she would stand at the airport and give people a hug like she thought. Uh, you know, thought she knew him and people go, Oh, that was so sweet. And walk away and go, Holy shit. Where's my pearls? Where's yeah. my credit card? Where's, where's my money? She was pickpocketing she was a, people. Yeah, she was pickpocketing people. So what was her tool? Her tool was her routine. I'm an old woman that looks a little befuddled. I come up to you, I pat you down and I take it away. Why did the tool work? Because she had refined uh, uh, that tool in that situation and well, used all the atmospherics right. and the, his tools, the biometrics what, and everything. What along. are we talking about? What do tools do? Tools can give you access, right? So, so she Simply. was, she, she, that's how she got access. You gained yep. access into that place by popping yep. the lock, right? A yep. lock pick is supposed to give you access. That's what exactly. we're talking about. Tools can do tools can give you, can, can give you access, but um, you know, it's always about, what is the intent? And, and you, I know we talked about a case where uh, maybe if you want to go over at the uh, woman at the school board meeting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's a, a perfect example. So first of all, uh, uh, I apologize because at the end of the street tools argument a few minutes ago, Brian said, so what's the difference between, no, what you, you, you asked it so simply because you were rhetorically asking, so what makes a tool a weapon? And I said intent and you go, there's a podcast. Remember that? Yeah. That's how, uh, you know, and it was months ago that this has been uh, uh, dancing around in our heads. So a female showed up at a school board meeting and because uh, uh, she didn't completely understand how you have to, you know, call ahead and schedule a meeting and do this and you can't just stand in line in this specific context. What, what happened is she said, listen, I want to talk about my son or daughter. Don't remember a lot of times gone by now. It's at least a month. And, and uh, they were like, hey, listen, there's procedure. This is the way things are going to be. So she pulled out a gun and set it on the counter in front of her and said, can you hear me now? Are, are we talking now? Now, Brian, the idea that that was not an assault, it wasn't her intent to carry out a terroristic threat in her environment, her baseline uh, uh, created the environment where, like, I'm the youngest brother, and every one of my brothers is gigantic, right? So I had to use humor mm -hmm. so I wasn't constantly getting beat beaten. down. Yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? So in this female's environment, the only way to, to, to get in and go, hey, I'll have that last uh, 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 turkey leg, you know, uh, from Thanksgiving or, or to say, hey, I, I need to use the bathroom next or I'd like to watch ESPN, whatever that was, there was always a, a, a tool here, a weapon that was involved in getting her access to what she needed. So she wanted to be heard. That's all she wanted. She, right. she didn't want to hold hostages, Brian. You know, it wasn't an armed robbery. She just said, do you hear me now? Can, can we talk now? And, and oh, my God, they arrested her and they were throwing a book at her and everything else. Well, I mean, still, yeah, she brought a gun I to I get her. it. That's yeah. not the, that's not the well, way to do it. 
but we don't educate folks. Where's our civics it, class that tells us how there's alternatives, right? Critical thinking skills. Uh, uh, for example, th did you read the article this morning I sent you about the, uh, it was very close to the, the article about the vaping. Okay. In, I, in I didn't read as, it yet, but yeah, it, it saw okay, the, so someone searched. A female yeah. in, 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 in uh, London uh, was taken uh, off to the side, 15 year old, I believe, and she was strip searched. Now this female was asked to bend over, uh, 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 spread her buttocks, uh, uh, you know, go through all these other things because somebody thought they smelled marijuana and they thought it was her. One, marijuana. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, uh, two, uh, spread your butt cheeks. Uh, listen, even if you were uh, uh, alleged to have a Molotov cocktail, we're back to the elephant in a matchbox here, Brian. What, yeah. What, what good? And, and it's all down to juice squeeze. You know, you're in an environment where you got to carry a gosh damn ball peen hammer in your boot go out and take the the 200 dollars concealed weapons course and buy you, you, well, you understand i mean yeah, i don't get you, what's you, going on where you we're, you have more i think legal standing in that sense if you went out and took that course and had a had yep. an actual gun on you instead of a ball peen hammer i i get it i think so and so listen but we're not talking about self-defense in the in the girl that smelled like marijuana and they strip search her what we're always talking about you and i it seems we're always talking about the egregious content. We're, we're, we're never talking about normalized stuff that, hey, this happened and then the person did this. You, you spouted off and I punched you in the nose. We never have discussions on that. It's always you spouted off. I walked out of the dentist's office and came back in and yeah. killed too. Am yeah. I lying? Yeah. I, I mean, so, so that crescendo of violence, that, 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 well, that, uh, 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 it's just amazing to me that, that people would strip search anybody nowadays for weed or for a vape pen and, 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 and well to go back to the school board thing i mean because i want to yeah. make sure it's a, that yep. the idea of kind of what you're saying is that she never had the intent to use never. it as a weapon she exactly. had the intent to use it as a tool to get her, her access right to get access when the to russian what she premier wanted, right? when the russian premier was trying to get the attention of the united nations he took off his shoe and he beat his shoe on, on the podium okay that's what she did Instead of using her shoe, she used a gun. Was it a poor choice? Yes. Was that part of her socialization and likely part of her education level? Yes. So therefore, what I'm trying to say is it was a poor choice, young lady, but she shouldn't go to federal prison for it. You, you get right. what I'm trying to say? Right. Because it, it never met the standard of intent. Now, I don't want to give anybody else it, an idea. No, no. But meaning right? it's, it's, that's, it's different than the person who walks into the city town meeting with pulls a gun out and takes everyone yep. hostage and says, yep. you remember no, the guy, the, yeah, yeah, you yeah. remember the, with the bead that he painted on? Yep. yep. And, and, as, and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a perfect it's, example. It's completely right? different. Of, and, and I, you know, kind of throwing it back to the theme of the show, the, the, are they using it as a weapon or are they using it as a tool? You know, was yes. it a weapon or was it a tool? Because those are two different things. Now they, so, there, there, was, there was a guy, uh, uh, and, and I can't remember his name. Do you know who Godfrey Cambridge is? I don't know if you remember the actor. It's a long time ago uh, actor, very popular in the 70s. But he was a, 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 a black uh, comedian and actor that was much the same as prior uh, in opening up doors that, that uh, comedians at that time that were black never had, and specifically on TV and film. And, and he did a film where he portrayed a white fella. And it was hilarious in a lot of ways, but it was also kind of dramatic where you're going, ah, I get it. So later, yeah. much later, probably 25 years ago, there was a, a black male that showed up at a university and uh, uh, did whiteface and was talking about things in a sociology class, then would gradually take off the disguise and say, hey, I'm actually a black male. Okay. Uh, 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 why, why am I talking about that? Because those were tools to grasp the attention of an audience in a very specific way to discuss something else. Okay. So you look at it and you go, wow, that's, that's going all the way around the house to get. Yeah. But in that context, at I, that I time for yeah. that message, that tool was effective, just like a Phillips head and, and a standard screwdriver are different tools for a job. Now we might not agree with that. Yeah. You, you, that no, yeah. You don't have to agree okay. with it, but, but Precisely. call it what it is, but understand that that was a tool. So it wasn't a weapon. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And, and then people say, well, a weapon's kind of a tool. No, no. A, a, a weapon is to inflict yeah. injury or death. Okay. And, and, and the, uh, the idea is that sometimes it's used just to threaten, of course. But, but the, the, the idea is that once you've threatened, now it's no longer a tool. It becomes a weapon. Your intent is demonstrated. You know, I, I, intent is your objective motive is what drove you to do it yeah intent is necessary to determine criminal liability 
motive is inconsequential. It's irrelevant. So, so, so that guy with the, 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 the uh, hammer and boot did more to demonstrate intent, intent right. knowingly or unknowingly than, than, than someone, a guy than carrying a gun could, in a holster. Well, yeah, it, it, exactly. Right. I mean, no, no. I, and I think that's, that's the compare. That's another yeah. comparison we're using here. And that's exactly what we mean by intent is you focus on what that intent yep. is. You know, if I um, am, I have a job where I have to go, I carry a lot of cash and I have to make yep. deliveries and I could, I'm, I'm more likely of a target. I'm concerned about my safety. And if I go get, I want to go get training and classes and get a carry concealed weapon um, for my personal protection. Well, what is my intent there to protect myself? Because yep. I have a dangerous job that I could potentially, I have a greater chance of being a victim of a serious crime. Uh, that's different than the, Oh, I'm going to throw yep. this, box cutter in my pocket or a ball peen hammer in my boot that's completely it's not different. you're exactly so, so right the intent is what what makes it so so uh, you, it, the the gun in that situation is yep. much more legal uh, and, and much and then then the then the, the and, the and tool, explaining the it to the tool. security guard hey listen i you know th this is my gun that i purchased legally that i have in a holster concealed because i work in a dangerous place all of those logical points meet uh, uh at, at a at a nexus and that nexus is logic. You, you see what I'm no, trying to say? And, and, a logical and, answer. And, and context matters too, because yep. sometimes someone makes the decision to turn a tool into a weapon. A knife is a great example. Most people have only used knives to cut their food, uh, prepare yes. their food, uh, cut open the cardboard box, or use it as a tool, yep. you know, what it's designed for, you know, but that one not long ago out here by me with San Diego where, where, you know, the, they showed up to, to do an eviction the, I think, the eviction notice. Yeah. And yep. you know, they're sitting there and this, she's the, I think they, she originally answered the door with like a knife in her hand or something. Yep, and then, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out, talk her out. It's like, well, then they find out while they're waiting before anything happens that she had threatened a neighbor the previous yep. day or two days prior with a knife. Okay. So now to that woman, all right, that knife is is now a weapon. It's no longer what she's going to use to prepare food. It's what yep. she's going to use to to defend her home and defend her what she thinks, you know, is, is she's being evicted. So yep. you, but what happened? You know, police went in and guy got stabbed and he's okay, but she used that as she's a weapon. Dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and so so uh, uh right there, Brian, that's a perfect example of taking a look at a funnel and and thinking of the front door of the female's home which apartment actually which she's being addicted from uh, uh in, in the bedroom at the back is the narrow end the the door at the front is the wide end of the funnel right mm -hmm. so when the coppers are with that that front end there's a number of coppers there she comes to the door with a french knife mm -hmm. they talk they do everything right they're they're filming it the guy notices that she has a knife hey don't do anything with the knife because i will shoot you she ends up throwing the knife at the coppers and slamming the door so now the coppers can't stop. Now they have to go inside according right. to their logic. Right. Now they go inside and there's double the number of coppers and a dog. And they're starting to go down a channel, a hallway mm -hmm. to the smallest end of the funnel. So no offense. You don't have to be Albert Einstein to figure out what's going to happen. This next. Is gonna go. Now it gets binary, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's that shoot, don't shoot. And somebody's going to walk away stabbed and somebody's going to walk away shot. So, so do you, I, I want to touch on that only because of the, the tool weapon thing. Listen, I tried to become the most highly trained martial artist of my generation. I worked very hard at that because I thought that was a very important distinction in my life. I got to the level where I was very, very highly trained and experienced in teaching others and fighting others and doing all this other stuff. When it dawned on me, wait a minute, if I can conduct predictive analysis, I never have to fight at all. Yeah. And, and, and so it was cathartic, right? So, so Brian, if you knew that she had a knife, you opened the door and then she had a knife. And yes, they, they exercise patience and, and, and uh, less than lethal, but the de-escalation with the gift of time and distance wasn't there. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And you're saying, yeah, but it's an eviction. And if we got to wait for this special client every time, well, well I'll tell you what, she'd yeah, have been alive. She'd been alive. The and wouldn't have been stabbed. Exactly. And she, okay. obviously she's, it's, it's an eviction thing. She has to go at some point, but it's, she's Precisely. already stayed past her welcome this long. What, what's another yep. day? What's well, another I mean, hour? Well, What's we, another yeah, minute? Yeah, I am exactly with you. It's, you know, it's, what, what, are we vilifying the cops though? No, uh, because, this is what I'm saying. I'm just it's saying the it's decision about making we're vilifying and the way You're we're exactly the, right. the lenses that we choose to, to use to observe these things of, of yes. this, this, this has to, we create inevitability, right? 
We, we grease the skids. We create we an inevitable it. outcome. I because, completely agree. It, we, or we add to it. Yeah, I mean, because we, we, we come up with, well, this has to end. Well, well, why right now? I mean, you look at all the resources and the money. It is, you said like money and resources and time and all it yes. took with this situation. Like you, you, you're you doing that anyway. This is now the most important thing. When so, I mean, we, we kind of choose, oh, let's just solve this right now. Let's get this done. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, you're not taking into account the second, third order effects. What are the likely precisely. spirals here? And is it worth it? Is it really worth it? Like Vape pen. never. 15 yeah. year old in London with a smell of weed. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Now, let me ask you a question. How, uh, uh, this was LA, right? Because I think it was LA that I saw. And the, it was an apartment and that the eviction. The, the no, no, no. Was, that right? was when I say that was San Diego. That was oh, yeah, San Diego, apartment. rather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but whatever. Same, but same what I'm saying course, is yeah. San Diego has jails or prisons that are close by it. What I mean by that, it's not, we're talking Anchorage, Alaska and Florida. If they would have called for additional resources, uh, like the dog and the other things and, and slow time down, could they have got the body bunker shields that the jails use? Because prisoners sometimes manufacture edge weapons. Oh, yeah. Is that true? Yeah, they're really and, good and, at it, and, too. Uh, uh, and uh, jailers have become very good at mobbing those folks and holding yeah. them down uh, with, like, red man-type suits. Yeah, and, not, no one gets and, and Brian, yeah, yeah, I'm right. out of my league here no, because I don't know what the you're current getting, tactic is, yeah, but you you're get getting, where I'm going? You're getting into TTPs, which is we don't typically discuss, no, but, but, but I get but what you're saying. Could though, there as, have yeah. been... Uh, uh, another venue or another uh, uh, avenue that they could have explored. Yeah, you get time. What, I'm trying to say? what about waiting? Uh, What's one more day? What's I, another I twenty four hours to to let to let her cool off and fall asleep or whatever? You get what I'm. I mean, it's just yeah. like what what is? Why does everything have to be solved right now? If we go around constantly responding to stuff, we never ever ever get ahead of it, and that's the whole thing. It was like, well, we got I this, agree. we got this. Like you're always gonna have this. There's always going to be something. So why aren't we stopping now? But but to, there's always to, gonna be an eviction. Okay, but yeah, I, I will sure. agree absolutely sure. with that. Um, <laughs> therefore, that I, I also agree that if there's has been evictions, there has been a female with a knife, and there has been other things that have worked. And, and you know what, these guys, we don't know this eviction crew. Maybe they've been on 24 hours doing nothing but evictions. We don't know the, the, the fact that the uh, uh, coppers were frustrated, what they had for breakfast. And, and folks, if you're a cop and you're listening to this, we're not bashing you in, in playing armchair quarterback. We're saying that a female is dead from an eviction. Okay. Nowhere in the law can you exercise lethal force for an eviction. So you yeah, get what I'm to trying to say? evictions. That's so, not so, no. A due process is for the courts yeah. and, and you're saying yeah but the courts were the one that granted the eviction notice yeah, yeah okay they didn't they, but, but they didn't grant they didn't, you to, they didn't grant her death nothing you know I mean? in there said lethal force is authorized and you know and uh it's it's one of these like you are kind of getting a little bit off but i, I mean yeah. that, that that's that's what looking at it as i want to sorry i want to try and get back to the, the to the to the weapon and the tool because uh the other thing is this is also why um, people don't ever, a lot of times things get missed, right? Because yes. like you said, like, well, I never, I've never seen something used like that before. So I never had a file folder and experience for it, right? Yes. If I've only used a knife to cut my vegetables. Now a knife is a little bit more obvious because people know it's sharp and they use it all the time, so, but, so but, let's... but anything else that we're talking about, it's the, 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 the padlock and the, and the handkerchief, right? It's, it's all that exactly. stuff. But, but it, let's talk two instances, Brian that specifically address what I think the point that you're trying to make. You and I con conducted a, a vulnerability assessment at a major yeah. uh, corporate franchise. Yeah. And when we were going through the number one thing that we saw laying open on the top yeah. of everybody's desk was a box cutter. Now, in a domestic violence situation that spills over at work or a workplace violence situation, yeah. what would those people most likely use as their weapon of choice? Maybe starting with pushing and shoving, but that being available is an edge weapon that should be in, uh, uh, put in a drawer or in a locked security bin. They didn't agree with us, and they were like, yeah, 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 we're fine. Well, you'll see, okay? Uh, 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 that's one. Uh, second one that, that uh, 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 comes to mind is what do we buy people for their wedding gift because it's cheap, a butcher block knife set. Now a person's burglarizing your home or your apartment. You're between them and the door going, you, what are you doing in my house? They look around. And all they want to do is get out. So a pair of scissors, Brian, which is a tool, becomes a weapon, just as much as that French knife in the book, butcher block said, I don't want to kill you, but uh, I'm afraid. I'm yep. scared now. I don't want to go to jail. Yep. And I try to run past you. You grab me. 
and the next thing I know, it's a homicide, right? Yeah. So how so, often does that happen? Yeah. So 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 uh, uh, if I knowingly allow those things to lay around in my counter, specifically near an exit or an entrance, reap the whirlwind. You get it? Uh, life life isn't that complicated. We certainly have to, however, think about tool weapon in the context. And and I would ask a copper, a street copper, if you're patting somebody down and you find a, a bent quarter in their pocket, okay, clearly that, that tool uh, uh, was being used somewhere other than where it was intended. Now that's not tool weapon, that's tool, maybe burglary tool, Brian, maybe to steal a car, you get what I'm saying? But the idea is that look past what you're seeing and say, what's going on? You know, the access is key. The person with the the, the gas can coming up to you yeah. at the sit goes asking yeah. for a couple of dollars could also be the person that's gonna kidnap you or do a homicide because that same precursor, those same pre-event indications would be present, would they not? You know, hey, distraction, do you get what I'm saying? To gain access, sir, did you notice this over that? And then the next thing, hell, Brian, we use those to execute felony warrants, don't we? Right. Don't we use a ruse yeah. to do it? So yeah. so, so uh, I'm, I'm just saying that there's probably uh, uh, more than meets the eye. And if you slow time down, a lot of times you'll see those pre-event indications before you have to fight your way out of a situation. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. No, it, and and uh, it, like like you were kind of, mentioning at the beginning too i mean this is um a tool can be used as a weapon what can be used as it, it can be considered somewhat of a tool yep. but it, it it all goes back to the intent and this is kind of just another example of why we focus so much on intent yep. and and so little on motive right because yep. i'm never gonna walking down the street i'm never gonna know someone's motive for anything just looking at them you know what i'm saying you I really, you, you yeah. never will but I can determine their likely intent, right? And how this is supposed to, and how, uh, you know, how they're going to behave and act in a given situation. And, you know, tools are, are, are interesting because I know we got another one sent from, well, I think Sean sent it, but also uh, I've seen it on, on social media too. The, uh, the guy who had the iPhone, it looked like an iPhone on a, ca oh, in a case. Oh, spreads it a, out into a gun? It opens it up and it's actually like a gun, a little, I don't right. know, I don't, like a little zip gun, a modern day zip gun, right? Right. You know, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's, a, it's a heuristic when we see that, oh, it's a cell phone. And then we don't ever give something that, that second chance or that second look. And, access, baby. Well, that that's give what you I mean. access that, 101. That's, that's how it, 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 can, it can grant you access, right? So listen, what Brian is telling you, folks, motive is irrelevant. Get motive out of your mind. The same as attitude, uh, viewpoint, feeling. Put those in a separate compartment because what we're doing, artifacts and evidence in support. So that means no matter whether the act is committed with a good intent, or a bad intent, if the person does it purposefully, consciously, intentionally, and it's prohibited by law, then you've got criminal liability. That's all you have to have. Motive is a standard that's not necessary uh, uh, to prove you uh, criminally culpable in any crime. So the idea is that motive is a good thing to have if you're an attorney making your summary argument maybe to a jury, sure. but it's absolutely sure. unnecessary uh, uh, and irrelevant. So, so when you take a look at something, the, the, the idea that almost any tool, when it's in your hand, again, here we are in anger and rage. <coughs> I am uh, in a bar room or a restaurant setting. Somebody bumps into my chair. I turn around and say, excuse me. And that person's having none of it. And now the tray that they were carrying their food on turns into an impact weapon. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get what I'm trying to say? We, we have to think about that. Not when we're at the restaurant, Brian. I think that's what we're telling people all the time. Take a look at uh, uh, where you're in more danger. You're in more danger in your car if it's a road rage incident. You're in more danger at the restaurant or at the gas station, as Brian loves, uh, uh, because you're out of your car and you're actually walking around with a credit card or money in your hand to pay for something. So if we take this as one splinter of the pie, you know, one piece of the pie, now having that tool and having it be able to be a weapon just based on the intent, you got to think about your actions too. If you punch somebody, you're probably going to get arrested. Uh, uh, you're at least going to get cited, and that's an assault. If you punch somebody with something in your hand, yeah, okay, it's that, a whole new it's game. It's different, yeah. Even if that thing in the hand is a book or an ashtray, you get what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. or a stapler, a red stapler. Uh, you <laughs> punch this guy if he, if he <laughs> kills me to clear up my ground. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, and and that's that's a. 
that's a really good point. And why is it different? Because that's de demonstrating intent versus defending yourself, right? No, you yep. you used a weapon, right? That you brought for the purposes uh, that's that's made for this or a tool that's made for this. You know, it's and the, the law tries thing. to teach you, Brian. So yeah. so your defense is going to be, hey, look, I had it in my hand. I got surprised. I used it. And the law says, hey, you should have engaged the, the gift of time and distance because you should have allowed your brain to cool that would have cooled the body. You would have set down the item and called the police and let them work it out r rather than me hit you with the swing line, the red swing right, line. Right, right, which is also, you know, it's better if, if you use the other person's gun on them. <laughs> the, the, the one. Where are we brought, going? Go on, the, as Brian would say. Go on. If, if you're the one that brought the weapon to the fight and I ended up with mm -hmm. it and used it, I never had any intent that day of doing it. But <laughs> That's the Rick Moranis defense <laughs> in the very first Ghostbusters where the guy comes running out and the apartment's on fire and the whole uh, uh, upper floor has been ripped off. And Rick Moranis is looking around because he's possessed by Gozer, the gatekeeper. And they go, what just happened? He goes, ah, some asshole brought a cougar to a party and the damn thing went nuts. <laughs> what a great line. You know what I'm saying? So as coppers, I cannot tell you how many times I used that exact line when there was just total devastation there. Think about what you said, though, Brian. Yeah. If you bring alcohol to a party and somebody yep. gets drunk, if you bring a gun to a party and somebody gets shot, do you get what I'm trying to mm -hmm. say? I mean, uh, if you are thinking that, hey, I'm going to line things up in my house just in case this happens, and, and then it happens, then, well, then it's kind of intent. Yeah, it's kind of intent. Yeah. Kind of intent. I'm going to set this up so if someone were to break in or yep. were to do this. How many times just... have we seen that? Mm -hmm. they, they say, okay, I'm tired of getting broken into, so I'm going to rig this explosive device <laughs> or this trap, and a person gets killed, and now they're up for homicide. And they said, okay, well, you knew or should have known that the intent of your actions would deliver this. A, a, a tool, a computer is a tool. Can a computer uh, kill somebody? Arguably, yes. Do you remember the female that, that talked the guy into, hey, you talk about killing yourself. Why don't you go in the garage and start Do that it. car? Yep. Uh, you see what I'm saying? So, so a lot of things unintentionally that are viewed solely as tools could easily become a weapon. And you're defending your life now, so you better think of those now. You better sit around and look at what those could be now, because if not, and the person's got intention and uh, uh, access to you, it could uh, be that you're going to film your own homicide. Yeah, I I agree. Um, so I I think again, I always refer back to like when when understanding some of this stuff is that you know obviously context matters because that yeah. determines the intent right i mean that that's really you you can't you can't just do the a guy with a ball peen hammer on his tool belt while he's working on a home yep is very very different than a guy with the ball peen hammer in his boot <laughs> like, yep. i mean it's just it's it's not hard to define yep but we don't think of it that way sometimes it's it's we're not yep. trying to be you know oversimplify this stuff it sometimes really is that simple and this is why also just a reiteration of why we constantly focus on intent how do i how do we get through the 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 understanding the situation is okay well what is this person trying to do and then they'll tell you yep. they'll show you they'll demonstrate it in their actions and behavior and even sometimes what they say but uh that's the idea so so go to hockey where everybody's issued a stick before they go out on the uh, ice yep. and yep. then imagine what the referee's role in hockey okay it's two roles or she procedural okay you cross mm -hmm. the blue line before the yep. rest of your team so therefore it's icing uh second thing is okay that hook that you just did was uh, uh, to pull the person off the puck and make him trip and fall. You use that tool yep. them, to move the puck around as a weapon. Yep. And, and, and so and that's therefore why that's a penalty. Yep. That's it. So, so, so sometimes life, Brian can be literally that simple. You, you get mm -hmm. where I'm going, you yeah. know? So the comparative, uh, 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 gosh, I don't want to use a analysis. I want to use a comparison solely is enough to help most people understand why that female that brought the gun to the to the school board meeting uh, uh, was wrong, but she shouldn't be vilified. She should be taught. You, you get what I'm trying to say? Because yes. that's part of that's, socialization as well, isn't it? Well, they, that gets into, uh, you know, what are the repercussions for these actions? Okay, well, what was the person's intent? 
Yep. Like, you, you know what I mean? If, if you, you, that, that's a, that's a perfect point with the school board yep. meeting because her intent was never to use that weapon and shoot someone and kill someone. Now we, exactly. we, should, we did what she do is incredibly stupid and potentially very seriously exactly. dangerous. It could have killed someone. Yes, yep. but she didn't. And this is what she was using it for. She didn't walk so, in and point it at someone and say, hey, now is my turn MF or, and ain't no one leaving this room. Okay. You know, I mean, it's just a different way of, of uh, so determining spot on. What, what we should do in terms of an intervention strategy right exactly uh, and, exactly. and, and, a, and a punishment or you know how we're going to what do we want to get to happen but brian i think this goes to you, your point is that if i spent more time teaching you to play basketball or go swimming or paint mm -hmm. uh, or, or make a pot rather than running around late at night and shooting yeah to get the thrill of shooting or to shoot at another gang member now all of those cases are solved at bang what do i mean mm -hmm. Uh, 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 now some poor 13 year old kid is laying dead. They've got a weapon that's on the ground. The town is burning down and everybody goes, man, he was only 13. Nobody wants to take a look at all the precipitating factors or, or the artifacts and evidence that were in support of the conclusion. They just want to see that the train crashed into the car at that intersection and killed somebody. So what we need to do is we need to back that off and say, if the tool that you're carrying is likely also a weapon and the environment that you're in is highly volatile, uh, uh, the chances of specific violence and danger at that point increase exponentially. Because if you didn't have that and you weren't there, and, and, and people are going, yeah, yeah, we get your fucking logic. No, you don't. The, 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 the problem is that you keep fighting it at ground zero. You keep yeah. fighting it behind the yellow uh, uh, evidence tape. What I'm saying is it's much better sitting down with your kid at the kitchen table and going, look, son, I think you got a gun hidden around here somewhere and you're out there playing and, and you're going to do something stupid and either eat that gun yourself or you're going to shoot one of your friends or some. Uh, 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 Sean sent me a, a, another article and it was a third this year so far uh, uh, where the kid finds a gun after the parents drive around to the dope clinic yeah. and it's in the back seat and they accidentally shoot themselves or one of their, their co-workers. Yeah. Uh, three times it was people going to dope clinics. Was the dope clinic the proximate cause? No. No. The idea was that, have you heard of a holster? You had yeah. a loaded gun in your car with the parents in the car. And guess what? It was poor critical thinking skills. So, Brian, are we talking tool weapon? Are we talking advanced critical thinking skills that creates the possibility of a tool becoming a weapon or taking that weapon and just putting it back in and saying it's a tool for hunting? I'll bring it out in November. You, you get it? Right. I, I mean, I, I don't want to oversimplify it or be pedantic. Well, I just it, want people to stop and think for a minute about what they're talking about. I don't think I actually don't think that's oversimplified. And it's why we always circle back to intent like we've been talking about. It's yeah. not. It's 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 if you we focus on that, then it it clears up some of the the, the hyperbole around these incidents. Right. Yep. I mean, you just said it like it is the is the is the you know dispensary the the cause of that kid. No, no it's the jackass parents that you know in that car at that time yeah. that aren't thinking it, it could have been a under. library that they pulled up in front Precise. of it didn't well, <laughs> well not today it couldn't yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> i'll fight on that one to my death but 7-eleven i'll buy walmart i'll buy yeah okay. library okay. i go Probably by our library all the time crickets baby crickets. yeah that's 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 true that's true um well, I'm more likely at a at a dispensary than a than a, than a library we'll say i will that, agree but, but, right right but but, but your but point is well taken true. that wasn't that, the cause but but that would that would be looking at you could just look at historical data for yep. crime and, and make that determination it has nothing to do with that it, it, that but yeah that's a whole nother so two coppers got shot overnight one copper is dead uh they were to motel six motel six don't sue me it's just a fact that's where it was and people at that motel six never thought that there was a fugitive from justice there that always was is. armed that was right next to him in a room so we never anticipate we never think that today on the way to the library, Any we're going to stop and get gas and this is going to happen. We go to a hotel anywhere. I'm yep. always going, let's pick out the felon in, at the hotel because yep. there's, oh, I mean, there's just the, the, the probability, the likelihood of, of someone, you're at a hotel uh, that is right near the intersection of two major interstates. Yep. You, you got dope deals going on at the Walmart nearby. You got felons hanging out, going from one place to another, or meeting someone. Like every hotel I go to, yep. it, it's just now 
the last one we were at actually in, in Montana, there was really nice, but even there you go. They carried me in a sedan chair to my room. They had <laughs> fans on me. I've never seen a hotel that nice. Thank they you guys. Free beer and wine in the oh afternoon. My God, I was thanks, like, this is horribly man. dangerous. This hey, is hopefully horrible. some of those people tuned in and we'll be listening to this yeah. very podcast. But, but it was a uh, beautiful, but, but even that yeah. you're, you're always doing the, I, that's, that's another thing. I know we've never talked about hotels, but that is. They are. Well, isn't it though? Hey, uh, 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 I, I, I know we're coming in for a landing, but I also mm-hmm. want to take a minute to, to shout out uh, uh, Bridger Aerospace, huge, wonderful friends up there now. Bozeman, Montana, don't be afraid, folks. It's cool. Uh, none of the bison or bears attacked us or the elk. Or that was moose. a fun place. Uh, hey, how about Heather's Taxi? Uh, uh, Heather in, is in amazing. Bozeman. In Bozeman. So if you're in Bozeman and you're going to get from the airport to your hotel, <laughs> <At 4 a. laughs> I'm telling you, Heather is the way to go. There so, go. and you know how you get a hold of her, right? Heather's call her. taxi. Yeah, Heather's that's taxi. It. You can <laughs> yeah, call her and text her anything. It's pretty Oh, we pretty had a phenomenal easy. time. I yeah. don't think Heather's taxi uh, works in Columbia. So. It does not. I'm just thinking that's of a that. different too. taxi service. All right. Nah, well, they, I, they, I, they, I, I'm just excited that's... about that. So I'm, I don't know if that's the end or the beginning. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget we do have our Patreon site with even more stuff on there, um, more content. We'll keep adding more, yeah. and we, we also gives us the ability to answer questions uh, that you all have. If you reach out to us at leftofgreg at gmail dot com or ask us on the Patreon site, we'll get to you right away on there. Yep. Um, and and some some of our listeners ask such good questions. We've done several episodes on those on Just those based questions. On yeah, so uh, that that could be one uh, that you do. But we do appreciate everyone. If you got a second, go scroll down and give us a thumbs up or or a five star rating. It really does does help. And if you want to give us like a a one star rating, why just just write to us. And we'll exactly. talk it out. We'll talk it out. Exactly. Don't, don't give us a bad review on social media. Um, but thanks everyone for tuning in. And please don't forget that training changes behavior.